The Starlight Lounge presents An Evening with the Progressive Box. Oh, what a great audience. Let's dim the lights for this next one. Oh, too much. Ah, there it is. Got to get things just right. Like Progressive's Name Your Price tool. Tell us what you want to pay, and we help you find coverage options that fit your budget. And now, the mood is right. Wait, the lights are back on again. Trudy, can you? And now it's completely dark. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Most writers and radio show hosts know that to connect with your fans, you need to do more than just write books or record the latest podcasts. There are many different elements that go into forming an online platform, but there are also many hidden traps. To make matters worse, solid advice on how to survive the muddy waters is scarce. In the book Hidden Traps, I talk about some of the important issues of working with an online platform, highlighting traps that could put your physical or internet security at risk, or be harmful to your reputation. Are your social media posts just links with a few disjointed words making you look like someone who can't complete a sentence? Did your new website cost you more than you anticipated? Are you leaking your personal contact details across the web without even knowing it? Then you need Hidden Traps. Hidden Traps is now available in paperback and ebook from a variety of retailers, including Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Kobo. Visit blackwolfpublications.com for more details. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now, and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-553-8687. That's 800-553-8687. Again, 800-553-8687. 687. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. Everyone loves liberty. Our rights come from God, not the government. So why are you letting other people tell you what's best for your health care? Exercise your freedom with Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is a community of people who voluntarily share one another's medical costs. Liberty HealthShare is founded on the idea that most people truly want to help one another. Healthcare sharing allows members to do just that as a true community that supports one another in times of need. Liberty believes people should make decisions for themselves and their families. Members are able to take back the freedom to make their own decisions about their health care. Freedom from guilt or doubt about how your money is used. You have the freedom to direct your health care not to be dictated to by bureaucrats stop letting others tell you what to do and join a community of like-minded people exercise your freedom join liberty health share and take back the control of your health care while helping those around you call liberty at 855-58-LIBERTY again that's 855-58-L-I-B-E-R-T-Y for more information or you can check them out at libertyhealthshare.org again that's libertyhealthshare.org my son was in the army back during desert storm But even then, he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq, Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree, too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible. Affordable. Relevant. Call 800-910-1370. At St. Jude, a family never sees a bill at all. It's like the world has been lifted off of your shoulders. 
St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Finding cures, saving children. Learn more at stjude.org. Sometimes writers feel lost, unsure why. A pa- it takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to offering manuscript critiques and line edits through a mentoring editorial style. We also offer assistance this file for your Black Wolf Services, nurturing your writing into mature. For a full list of services, visit blackwolf.com. You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. Hello, 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 America. We are here. We are just about to be live. This is Rick Robinson, host of America Off the Rails. We'll be kicking off here officially in just about a minute or so. Just wanted to tell you guys we are live tonight. Sorry about the gremlin issues last night. We got it tracked down. Maybe at the end of the show I'll explain what happened. Probably not because I don't want to die. But anyway, it's kind of a funny story. But anyway, maybe by the end of the show we might talk about it. I have a couple of guests actually with us tonight. I'll be bringing the first one here on in just a few minutes. And we'll actually give him a chance to introduce himself as soon as we open up that part of the show. Now, without further ado, what do you? What, without further ado, what do you say we go ahead and kick this thing off? We'll be right back to start the show here in just a minute. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-610-9050. That's 800-610-9050. 800-610-9050. Keep on doing what you do, Rick. You're my favorite host. Favorite, host. favorite host. You know this freedom is anything but free. What we have here depends on those who will fight. Good evening, folks. Welcome to the program. I am Rick Robinson. We are live right now on KLRNRadio.com, where liberty and reason still reign. We do this thing every Tuesday through Friday night when the Internet's working. Actually, you know what? We have a monologue time. I may actually go into that a bit just because it is kind of a funny story. <clears throat> but anyway, so we're live every Tuesday through Friday night at 7 p.m. Eastern on KLRNRadio.com. The show is rebroadcast and available on AMFM247.com every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern. The Lanterns Radio Network every Monday through Friday at 8 a.m. Eastern. And the, uh, actually, I guess we're not with Talk America Radio Network anymore. They've actually uh, condensed to one stream. But we're still available on CRNDigitalTalk.com every Saturday and Sunday at 10 p.m., 9 Central, 7 Pacific. Um, so uh, if you count all the podcast places, which is pretty much every podcast site known to man, the show is on multiple times a day. All right. So anyway, um, so to explain last night, so I come home and pull in the driveway and it's probably about 15 minutes to showtime. And, you know, 
Uh, Thursdays are usually when we have the, uh, the the sponsor of the show on. We usually have them on every other Thursday, which is uh, Liberty Hills here. Unfortunately, I pulled into the driveway, and the first thing my son said to me today was, I hope you don't have a 6 o'clock show because the Internet's not working. So I called the Internet company, and, of course, they're, like, putting me on hold for, like, 30 minutes. So at that point, I just assume there's an outage. So this morning I get up, and we still don't have Internet. So I call them, and they roll a tech, and the first thing the tech says is, you guys ran over the phone line when you were... So we live out in the country, right? So um, we have a garden area. He actually said he was surprised we didn't manage to kill it last year. Um, but I live in the country, so I didn't really think about the fact that they had lines running underground. Because, you know, usually those things are above ground in the country. But so anyway, we actually managed to kill our own internet. So we've got it up and running again. That's actually one of the reasons why I may seem a little more frantic than usual. I got home and had to reprovision everything and get everything set up. But here in just about another minute and a half, we're going to have our first guest of the night. That's right, we have two guests on the show that rarely has one, and usually they take up the whole hour. We actually have two guests coming in tonight, so we'll have one that I'll bring on in just a minute. I want him to introduce himself because I don't want to ruin the surprise. And then, of course, after, after the bottom of the hour, we'll actually have the chairman of the uh, the Federalist Party on with us, um, and we'll actually give out some information uh, about uh, him here in a little bit as well. But without further ado, let's get the first break out of the way so we can actually, you guys can stop listening to me talk and we can actually bring in a guest. This is America Off the Rails. I'm your host, Rick Robson. We'll be back in about 60 seconds. Stay tuned. Everyone loves liberty, our life is in God, not the government. So why are you letting other people tell you what's best for your health care? Exercise your freedom with Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is a community of people who voluntarily share one another's medical costs. Liberty HealthShare is founded on the idea that most people truly want to help one another. Healthcare sharing allows members to do just that as a true community that supports one another in times of need. Liberty believes people should make decisions for themselves and their families. Members are able to take back the freedom to make their own decisions about their health care. Freedom from guilt or doubt about how your money is used. You have the freedom to direct your health care, not to be dictated to by bureaucrats. Stop letting others tell you what to do and join a community of like-minded people. Exercise your freedom. Join Liberty HealthShare and take back the control of your health care while helping those around you. Call Liberty at 855-58-LIBERTY. Again, that's 855-58-L-I-B-E-R-T-Y for more information. Or you can check them out at libertyhealthshare.org. Again, that's libertyhealthshare.org. All right, folks, welcome back. This is America Off the Rails. I'm your host, Rick Robinson. And without further ado, we do have our first guest. Then I'm going to go ahead and bring him on now and give him a chance to introduce himself. Good evening, sir. How are you? Great. How are you? I am doing all right, sir. So why don't you take a few minutes to tell everybody a little bit about yourself, and we'll kind of go from there. Great. My name is Mike Velarde. I'm a retired federal law enforcement officer. I worked for the criminal division of the IRS for 22 years before I retired in 2010. While I was on the job, I was a 9-11 responder. I was a member of the Joint Terrorism Task Force. I worked on the El Dorado Drug Task Force, did a lot of U.N. dignitary protection assignments for the, with the United States Secret Service, met such uh, dignitaries as Yitzhak Rabin of Israel, Al Gore when he was vice president, President Robertson of Trinidad and Tobago. And uh, after I retired, I, I established the tax division of the protection law firm. I became an enrolled agent representing people before the IRS, and I've had a lot of success with that, uh, you know, settling tax bills for pennies on the dollar. And I got two companies, Mike Velarde LLC and Winning Tax Solutions. And... Um, I'm pretty well known for uh, for my tax expertise, and that's who I am. Wow, you've you've done a lot. So let let's back up a second. Um, actually, at some point, if we have time, I'd kind of like to talk to you about the other stuff that you have going on with the private businesses that you've started. But one of the reasons why you were brought to my attention through Station Manager and through uh, another host is actually because of. Uh, the recent shootings uh, that have, ha or the recent shooting that happened here in Florida. So I have some yeah. questions. As uh, calling on kind of your uh, expertise background as a formal uh, former federal agent, I, I have yeah. some questions. So because one of the things that they, and my my questions have kind of changed a bit because of news that's come out today. So one of the things that's just now starting to come out today is that the FBI was apparently aware of this shooter and aware of issues, and apparently they didn't follow protocol. Now, I know that you're not 
part of that same division, but I, I know you probably have some experiences with protocols, things like that. When people say they didn't yeah. follow protocol, what exactly does that mean? That means they dropped the ball. They, they, they didn't follow up the leads and do what they were supposed to do. Now, now things have changed tremendously at the FBI um, over the years. Um, for, let me give you an example. When I was when I was on the Joint Terrorism Task Force years ago, a- after 9-11, there was not a t- another terror attack while President Bush was in office. Uh, when President Obama became in office, he changed some of the policies, this, which, which allowed things to start happening again. Um, and... I think as a result of those policy changes, we see that this is not the first time that somebody who committed a horrific act was on the FBI's radar, but it wasn't followed up upon. If you go back to that California shooting, similar situation. The FBI knew about it. They just didn't follow up. That, I think, was due to policy changes that the Obama administration had put in place. So I so actually yeah there, there's the one in California the one that we know about this one now and I th- I believe there's actually another one more where it's come to light where it was a very similar yeah. situation so yeah. um, so what you're saying is you you think that's based on policy changes so what policy was yeah. changed that could have so drastically changed the way FBI handled incoming leads well and if I'm putting you on how, the spot just let me know they, who they who they look at and how they look at it All right, let me give you a couple of examples when I was there okay. Um, the reason there was not another terror attack in America from the time of 9-11 until President Obama became president was we were able to get all emails, all, all communications. We were able to stop everything right away. We knew who to look at. We knew who not to look at. And by focusing on the people that you know with, with a high probability of, of causing a terror attack, you could, you could more effectively use your resources. So, so yeah, so basically – like profiling. So, well, okay. yeah. That, that, that's a dirty word now, so I'm sure that was one of the things that yeah, was Yeah, it's, it's a dirty word, but it's a very effective tool in law enforcement. Oh, no, I, I understand. So, <laughs> But, yeah, so, so – I'm sorry. I'm, trying to, I'm not trying to talk over you. Go ahead. No, no so, so what, I'm, what I'm saying is when you, when you, when you learn this, there's certain characteristics or there's certain propensity of certain groups of individuals that are going to commit violent acts, you, you need to focus on them. And when you need to focus on them, you need to stop it before it happens. And if you don't, this is, this is the result. Now, there's, there's other reasons for shootings like this also. Let me give you an example. Sure. Uh, 1997, um, we had a group meeting, and our boss called us into the office. He said, listen, we've got a new guy at the FAA. He doesn't want you carrying your guns on the plane. He, he wants you to go to the airport, check your gun. When you get off the plane, you pick it up again. I said to him, how stupid is that? I said, who would not want a federal agent who's armed on the plane in case something happened? And three, then four years later, 9-11 happens. Now, I don't think that Osama bin Laden was going to spend billions, millions of dollars planning this event unless he knew that the policy of the FAA was not to have firearms on board. The federal agents were not allowed. No one was going to be on the, on the plane with a gun. Now, right after 9-11, of course, what happened? They passed H.R. 218, and everybody who was a federal agent, whether you're going on your vacation in Hawaii, going to see your, your wife's kids or whoever it was, you had to, you had to bring your firearm. It was mandated. Everybody got air marshal training so that you know how to deal with a terrorist situation if you happen to be on that airplane. And, and one of the things I've come up with, and I proposed to, to – I just sent the letter to President Trump, is that if somebody is H.R. 218 qualified – now, H.R. 218 is the law that allows federal agents and police officers to carry their weapons after they retire, but they must qualify. So you have to be a shooter, and you have, you have to shoot, and you have to qualify. In other words, you have to make sure that you're hitting that target with a certain amount of accuracy. If you're HR 218 qualified, I think you should be able to carry your, your gun at schools. You should also go one step further and hire people that are HR 218 qualified. So you would now have somebody that's trained to deal with the situation if you did have an active shooter. It wouldn't cost the school much because that person is going to be hired to be a teacher or an administrator or for another job. But they will be armed and, they'll be, and they're already trained. You know, and actually that was that you're actually already starting to touch on one of the questions that I had was how can we start working towards avoiding situations like the the ones that we keep finding ourselves in? And I think you're on the right track there. That's one of the first things that I mentioned one of the last times a shooting like this came up when they're, especially when they're sitting around a school. Well, I mean, I was uh, too young to realize it at the time, but after doing some research, I realized that it was actually uh, Bush 41. 
uh, I believe, that passed the, the safe zone, uh, the gun-free zone laws in the schools that was actually put up by Joe Biden. I think that was one of the biggest mistakes that we ever made was putting up signs everywhere that says this is a gun-free zone. Because one of the things the liberals don't seem to understand is, you know, the laws don't only work on people that want to follow them. So you can post whatever signs you want, but it doesn't mean that their guns are going to magically disappear when they go in the door. Um, so I think you're on the right track about that. Um, and I do agree with the idea of putting people in schools that have had training, especially if they're going in as a teacher or a coach or whatever the case may be. And the training is kind of a secondary thing because of the field that they left when they initially retired. That is a really, really smart idea. And I don't understand why it's not being used. Um, I do have another couple of questions for you, but we're coming up on our first, or we're coming up on our first official break of the show. So we're going to have to take a really quick break. When we come back, I'm going to continue with my guest, Mr. Velarde, and we will continue discussing uh, the recent Florida shootings, the FBI and their changes in policy, and pretty much anything else that tickles his fancy because he's the guest. So we'll be right back here in about three minutes. Don't go away. You're out here acting so tough. Son was in the army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq. Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible. Affordable. Relevant. Call 800-910-1370. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 of pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-783-0810 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-783-0810. Again, that's 800-783-0810. All 
right, folks, welcome back. So we are finishing up uh, the segment with my guest, Mr. Velarde, a retired uh, federal agent who actually has been giving some opinions on the recent Florida shooting and some ways to try to avoid things like that. Some common sense ways, actually, which I really am surprised nobody else is trying. Uh, But one of the things that I definitely wanted to make sure that we got in before we have to wrap, because we've got about six minutes to the bottom of the hour. Um, I want to get your take on the liberal reaction as far as, you know, every time something like this comes up, it turns into a gun grab. They start uh, trending hashtags like gun sense. I don't understand what happened in this country because you go back about 40 years and there were guns everywhere and everybody was cool with it. There were guns in high school parking lots and gun racks and trucks and I mean, I remember when my dad was a kid, he was walking into school with a gun because he was leaving at the end of the school day to go hunting with his father. And now you even mention a gun and like 75 percent of the country starts hyperventilating. What the heck has happened to us? Yeah, I mean, you're you plant, you, you, you flaming the object. I mean, now you look at New York City. I mean, they, the guy used a truck. Um, I mean, I mean, a lot of a lot of attacks. I mean, not necessarily this one in Florida the other day, but have been Islamic because under 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 Islam, they believe that if they kill the infidels, the dead blood of the infidels will cleanse them and their families from their sin, and Allah would allow him into their paradise. And by the way, I did write a book pertaining to that called "The Time of His Coming," which is available at thetimeofhiscoming dot com or on Amazon. And it's, it, it, it combines the, the prophecies that are both in the Bible as well as those that are in the Koran. And I kind of give you a, a flavor for what's going to happen um, over the next 20 years in that book. But that, that is exactly what they do. They, want, they would love to disarm you. Um, because think about, think about how, what would that would mean. Nobody would be able to defend them. The problem here is when you create a situation like they did with these gun-free zones, say they yell out, hey, no one's going to be here. So for somebody to come and do a terror attack, whether it be the guy in Oregon at the college, that Muslim guy that was killing the Christians at the college because nobody was armed at that school, or it be this guy who was mentally ill and decide just to take everybody out, they know they're not going to get stopped because nobody's there to, with a firearm to stop them. And when you change that, when you have a policy that says, hey, we have armed federal law enforcement officers or federal or police officers that are retired. You're not going to know who they are. You can't identify them. Only the principal is going to know. And if you come to this school, you're, you are going to be met with extreme resistance. And we're going to take you out and we're going to take you out quick. That would change. That would change everything. That's what happened with 9-11. 9-11 was planned because they had to know that nobody on that plane was going to have a firearm. Since 9-11, when they put the air marshals on the plane, they gave all federal agents um, air marshal training, and they made sure that somebody is always armed on that airplane. There hasn't been a 9-11, and I don't think there will be again. No, I mean, there there won't because, I mean, it's one of those things where you know that somebody on that plane has a gun, or even if they don't, you are under the impression that somebody on that plane has a gun. And that's the same thing that I've been talking yeah. about since these things started years ago is if – even if only a handful of teachers in the school, if we, if the people that are doing these things know that they are going to meet armed resistance but don't know who it is, uh, then that's going to be enough of a deterrent for them. Because these people honestly do I – mean, most of them, except for the, the crazy extremist ones, they don't actually want to die. They don't want to meet resistance. They want to find the softest target possible and try to find a way to get away with what they're doing. So I, I, I do agree with uh, everything that you've talked about tonight as far as, you know, using people that already have firearm training. Uh, because, I mean, I know a lot of uh, former law enforcement folks that have gone into teaching. It only makes sense because, you know, th- they're already there. Why not use them? But I, I just exactly. – Common sense seems to be something that doesn't seem to be very common in the country anymore. All right, so we are actually just about out of time for the, uh, until we hit the bottom of the hour. So what, um, I don't know – I didn't get a chance to uh, get any information from Jess or from the station manager. Um, I don't know if you have any social media contact information you want to give out or anything like that. Yeah, I'll give it my website for, for, my, uh, for my for my tax business. It's Mike Velarde EA. That stands for EA stands for enrolled agent. It's Mike M I K E Velarde V I L A R D I E A dot com. Mike Velarde EA dot com. Or please please get my book at the time of his coming dot com. The time of his coming dot com. I think you'll find it a fascinating read. Well, I would like to say that you are welcome back anytime. We were actually talking about some topics um, during the break that I think the uh, audience would find most fascinating, uh, some of which have to do with our former president, but I don't want to give away too much until we can get you back on the show. Um, So you should have an email from both myself and from uh, one of the other station hosts, Jess. So 
make sure you keep up with that email. And if you ever want to come on, all you got to do is give me a, a nudge or I'll check with you every so often and see if there's anything that you want to come on about. And you are welcome back anytime, sir. It has been a pleasure. Um, I would normally try to have you on for the entire hour, but we already had a guest booked. Uh, we actually have the chairman of the Federalist Party coming up at the bottom of the hour. So that's the only reason why, unfortunately, we're kind of going to have to go. Otherwise, I'd keep you on and we keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rick, maybe in a week or two we'll do it again because I really enjoyed being on your show, and I thank you so much for the opportunity. No problem at all, sir. Like I said, you're welcome back anytime, so just let me know when you're ready. All right, folks, we're going to be right back. We've got to take the bottom of the hour break. When we come back, we're going to be on with the chairman of the Federalist Party, and we're going to change topics, but, well, kind of change topics, but same general idea, how to fix things that are broken in the country. We'll talk about that when we come back in about four minutes. Stay tuned. You're out here acting so tough, and now I'm calling. So why are you letting other people tell you what's best for your health care? Exercise your freedom with Liberty Health Share. Liberty Health Share is a community of people who voluntarily share one another's medical costs. Liberty Health Share is founded on the idea that most people truly want to help one another. Healthcare sharing allows members to do just that as a true community that supports one another in times of need. Liberty believes people should make decisions for themselves and their families. Members are able to take back the freedom to make their own decisions about their health care. Freedom from guilt or doubt about how your money is used. You have the freedom to direct your health care, not to be dictated to by bureaucrats. Stop letting others tell you what to do and join a community of like-minded people. Exercise your freedom. Join Liberty HealthShare and take back the control of your health care while helping those around you. Call Liberty at 855-58-LIBERTY. Again, that's 855-58-L-I-B-E-R-T-Y for more information, or you can check them out at libertyhealthshare.org. Again, that's libertyhealthshare.org. My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm. But even then, he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq. Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree, too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible. Affordable. Relevant. Call 800-910-1370. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-783-0810 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-783-0810. Again, that's 800-783-0810. You're out here acting so tough And now I'm calling you bluff 
All right, folks, welcome back. I told you the break wouldn't last that long. This is Rick Robinson. I'm the host of America Off the Rails. Hope you guys have enjoyed the first half of the show. Now we're going to change tax here. We actually have a guest, back-to-back guest. We don't do those that often, but this this has just been one of those nights, and we're kind of making up for lost time because one of them was supposed to be on last night. That didn't work out so well. So anyway, we are live. We're right here on KLRNradio.com, and without further ado, I actually have the chairman of the Federalist Party, believe it or not, Bill O'Reilly, but... Probably not the one you're thinking of, but he's still a pretty pretty cool guy. <laughs> Good evening, Bill. How are you? Doing, Rick? Thanks for having me on. It's a, it's a real pleasure. <laughs> you are you are you are welcome to that Bill O'Reilly. I'm, I'm, I'm taller and thinner when I'm on when I'm on Fox. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so why don't we go ahead and just kind of kick things off? Why don't you Why don't you kind of give folks your backstory? Let them know how you got involved in this because you know starting a political party is not an easy thing. So so where did you guys it, get the it, idea? It is. It is not an easy task, and the, the, the Federalist Party of America dot org up in the commercial page um, is um, is just officially launching. But um, I've been a, a Republican consultant for three decades, in working around the country, and um, and uh, but I you know uh, a couple of the people in the Federalist movement caught my eye over the past year and a half. I've become so frustrated with the um, with the, the federal government, um, with really the lack of distinction between the parties as you're watching the, the debt stimulate and, and the federal shift to Washington and stay there. And so I was kind of intrigued by some of the messages I saw out there in the, in the, uh, you know, it's Twitter sphere in the social media world. And eventually called the volunteers and looked at a you know, kind of column or, or do whatever you need. And, um, over, over time, they were very kindly asked me to serve on the board. And um, they said, what position would you like? And I said, whatever nobody wants. And they said, congratulations, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> my kind of party. My kind of party. But it's, uh, the, the party is really founded in principle, and it's taken off quickly because um, there's just a, there's a great audience out there because there's a real need for it. I mean, you have a, a federal government that's run completely out of control, and um, the Federalist Party of America uh, is looking to tackle that. It's looking for term limits, federal term limits, and we, we know, you know, 75% of Americans agree with us on that, whether they're Democrats, Republicans, liberals, or conservatives. Gallup had 75 in the last survey, and Rasmussen had 74. Americans know something's wrong in Washington, and they don't know what to do about it because the Democratic Party certain, certainly isn't going to do anything. They just call for, for more and more, and the Republican Party seems to have lost its, its – uh, its platform, the loss of the promises that, it, that it's made, um, you know, with 20 trillion in debt, and we're still adding to it. It's, um, you know, we're probably some more kids who are uh, we're running up credit cards, their credit cards, and they're going to pay for it. Yeah, I mean, I have to admit, um, I've been pretty disillusioned with uh, the Republican Party now for quite some time. Actually, I left the Republican Party in 2016. Um, here in Oklahoma, we have some pretty draconian election laws. So the only parties that were on the ballot up until 2016 were Republican and Democrat. So I got pretty heavily involved with the Libertarian Party because I kind of thought, you know, I knew a lot of people that were kind of looking for a new home. I had the uh, Great bunch of people. Yeah. yeah, I had the chairman of the uh, Libertarian Party on more than once during the 2016 cycle because I was trying to help them raise their profile. We did eventually get them put on the ballot here in Oklahoma, which is a pain, by the way. But we did manage to get it done. But what started turning me off about the Libertarian Party was by this was first of all, um, if they had done things the way they really should, then Austin Peterson would have been the guy at the top of the ticket, not the brownie muncher. Um, and second of all, their pick for vice president was starting to talk about things like the same things that I've heard Democratic senators talking about this week, the no-fly, no-buy list, where if you're on the no-fly list, you can't carry a gun. Well, there's no due process for that right. list. So so that, that those were two things that disturbed me. And then after having Nicholas Sarwark on about three separate occasions, he finally told me off-air – that he was no longer interested in coming on the show because he was not going to turn his party into the new Republican Party, and we didn't have a home there. Right, right. And and, and that's one of the things that the, the Federalist Party of America is being very smart about that, where we're foregoing ballot status for the first year for a couple of reasons. One, to get organized. We don't want to put the, car, the horse and try and bite off more than we can chew. But we're really looking to build up membership. But secondly, we want registered Republicans Democrats, libertarians, and states that have parties, people in other parties, to be able to join the Federalist Party of America with, uh, while keeping their current uh, ballot status without changing their registration. You know, until we get ballot status, they can kick the tires, join, see what we have to say, messaging, read the social media, get in touch, and if it makes sense to them, 
when we don't want the ballot, then we can do the switch then. So it's a it's a tactical move. But you know, you got you know, when parties start, you really have to focus on uh, a set of principles. And um, fortunately, we have the Constitution to uh, to inform us. And um, and particularly the, the the jurisdictions that the Constitution laid out to keep the most power from going into the federal government. Of course, the uh, the, the, the judges, the legislative uh, judges, have have tried to hack away. Um, but but the, we're, we're a constitution-based party. We're about strengthening communities, not just not just tearing down Washington, which is certainly needs to be torn down, and a lot of bureaucracies there. But we're also about building up communities. Do, do it locally. We talk about love thy neighbor. It sounds corny, but it's it's um it, we believe in government at the lowest level possible. If there's a challenge, you typically. Find out a way to take it out in your neighborhood or in your town. And if not, maybe you can go to the county and the state. But everything now goes to Washington. If you want to get a jungle gym for a playground, you got to check with HUD now. If you want to teach local history in your high school, you might have to check with the U.S. Department of Education. I mean, it's craziness how we've been been just taken over by Washington. And the uh, you know, Republicans and Democrats in uh, in Washington, they're not going to shut those agencies down. That's like asking Santa Claus to shut down his factories. You know, that's, those agencies stand out there 30 they get reelected. And um, that's why we think term limits is, is so important. Yeah, no, it's, it's interesting to hear you guys talking about term limits. Uh, we're actually coming up on a quick break. When we come back, I actually uh, want to give you a bit of perspective here because here in Oklahoma we have term limits and there's been some uh, unintended consequences, I would say. Um, so when we come back, we'll talk about term limits a bit more, kind of go into that a bit. Um, so this is America Off the Rails. I'm your host, Rick Robinson. We'll be back in about two minutes. Stay tuned. You're out here acting so tough, and now I'm calling you bluff. Black blood in the face, yeah. My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq. Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible. Affordable. Relevant. Call 800-910-1370. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-783-0810 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-783-0810. Again, that's 800-783-0810. All right, folks, welcome back. This is America Off the Rails. I'm your host, Rick Robinson. We're on right now with the chairman of the Federalist Party, Bill O'Reilly. Uh, when we went to break, he had started talking about term limits. I'm not going to take up too much time because I want to make sure that you have more time to talk. But I just wanted to give you a perspective of somebody that's been dealing with term limits. One of the things that we've run into that we didn't really take into account when we started doing term limits here in Oklahoma was the folks that by the time they got within six months to a year of the finish line, they were doing everything they could to line their pockets on the way out the door. So I I don't know how well term limits is going to work unless we can find a way to deal with that because that's one of the things that we're trying to fix here now. I I don't think it's it's, it's not a panacea at at every level. I mean, we have it in in New York City. They've got term limits and 
and we and we have just a, a miserable bunch that come through every you know four or eight years. Um, but um, for the for the federal side, we think it's it's super important because I mean, wh- what happened was you, you didn't the forefathers were trying to figure out how to deal with human nature and how to how to prevent uh, you know members of the House and Senate from from you know creating too much power around themselves, and it was going well for for a while. But in the, in the early 1930s, there were a couple of bad Supreme Court decisions, kind of errant takes on on uh, the, the, the you know the common welfare clause, the general welfare clause, and they um, allowed the federal government to get involved into local issues. And so it became a re-election strategy, the, uh, you know, to to begin to create these agencies and deliver things everywhere. And it was the one thing that our forefathers didn't foresee because they were probably better people than than we have now was the career careerism in politics. And really, that's become the, the the first order of business for anyone who gets to Washington is how do we raise money to get to the next cycle? And I've done this for 30 years. That really is what happens because you want to accumulate power over time because it's all done by by you know by tenure. It's not by um, by brains or by merit. It's all how long you've been there. And so, getting reelected is everything. And the way to get reelected is to deliver stuff that never should have come from Washington. That, that could come from your own town or your own state or county. Um, and so we don't see any, any, anyone um, undoing that voluntarily as long as they're, they're watching their political career at the same time. But I agree. It's, it's not a panacea. I've got, you know, there's a, a libertarian instinct in me that says, well, we, we've got a, you know, we've got term limits every two or four years, but just the, the way that they ginned up the system to, um, to protect themselves, the, you know, the, the, the incumbency protection, um, is such that that we think it's it's necessary. Twenty Eighth Amendment is necessary. Yeah, no, and I don't necessarily disagree with you because you know you'd mentioned something. And this is something that I hear all the time. Well, we already have term limits because we vote every two to six years to tell to, to put these people in or take them out. But that doesn't hold because the problem is if you look at Congress as a whole, everybody hates them. They're less popular than a root canal, and yet your own personal congressman and senator is the best thing since sliced bread. How can that's how right, does that that's work? Right. And you end up with the ninety six percent reelection rate that kind of exactly because you know they, they get you know they get the free media, you know, uh, you know, every every two years for, for two solid years they're they're in the press, they get free mailings, they're out there, they're doing their stuff. Um, and as soon as they get there, they're raising money and that's where they're they're getting compromised. Even the best even the best people. I've I've helped elect some really wonderful people over the years and, and really terrific people. But when you're in there a long time, you begin to get compromised. I mean, Madison said it best when he said, you know, men are not angels. If, if they were, we wouldn't need government. And that's, and that's right. And that's what the, the, our founding fathers were trying to devise a system where we could protect ourselves against human nature. They realized that once you give people power, they never give it back unless they're required to. And, um, and so that's, you know, we're trying to get uh, back into that to remove the incentives to stay in there forever. I mean, like pensions in, in, in Washington, these, um, these guys all, all get pensions. And then it's, well, oh, I've been in for 16. I'll do four more to get my 20. And then it's, well, I can, I can get the 30, the 30 pension. And it's, you know, I don't know why members of Congress don't have 401k. It's like, like other people. Um, but they're in there forever, and they've, they've created this, this massive, you know, distribution system of, of things that aren't run very, very well. And, um, and they're bankrupting the country. And well, they're, yeah. they're just they're, they're killing us. Yeah, case in point, Bernie Sanders. Guy's never held a job in his life before he went into uh, public sector work uh, as a politician. Now he owns three houses, but he's telling everybody else what they need to do with their money. Uh, so, I mean, <laughs> exactly. I mean, that, but but that's that's the thing. So, you know, you'd mentioned that the founding fathers they they had a, they had things set up to try to avoid human nature. One of the things that I think they did very well to help people avoid human nature was people didn't used to get paid to do congressional work and Senate work. They got a per diem when they were traveling and that was pretty much it. They did their time and then they went back home. So my question is because, you know, the big thing is, you know, now we have this big giant Washington bubble and nobody ever leaves it. With the technology that we have available today, why can't these people spend their time with their constituents and actually hearing from their constituents and being around the people that have elected them and basically do like, you know, Skype conferencing or something to do these votes. Why do we need this big federal bill or this big federal, you know, congressional hall 
that basically is just nothing but a bunch of fat cats. Why do we need to have them in Washington 270 some odd days a year when it used to be the exact opposite? They would go in there for a couple of weeks, do what they needed to do, travel back to their constituents, get their questions answered, go back, do it again. I I think we need to find a 21st century equivalent of this because they're spending so much time in Washington, they don't even know who their constituents are anymore. And especially when you get to two, three terms in, they're just like, eh, who cares? No, that's right. You see it happen to them. I mean, you know, there's there's occasions where they need to be in Washington and they get to you know see each other and and do the eyeballing and the talking. But there's there's no question they could be spending a lot more time in the district. And you can see it in their eyes when they begin to get in that bubble. And you know, you notice it. You see the the fire burns out on the campaign trail, and they really believe it. It's burning in their heart. And then they get to Washington, and suddenly it all becomes complicated. It's just all very complicated. And um, there's just a different look and a, a different way about it. And um, it really doesn't need to be that complicated. By the way, I should have said before, Rick, if you don't mind me mentioning there's a uh, – if people want to get more information on the Federalist Party of America, we also have a text system that they could do. Um, they just need to text Fed Party, you know, FED Party, to 53445, the Fed Party at 53445, and they'll be apprised of different things coming up. But um, but the uh, there's, there's no question that, that you know, they, they get their um, – they get there and they lose touch with their constituents. They lose t- touch with um, with community, with neighbors. Uh, they 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 forget what matters in people's lives, and um, and that's what we're t- we're trying to you know, get back into the conversation. Yeah, no, and I and and again, I do applaud what you guys are trying to do, and I I don't want to give the wrong impression. I just the only reason I mentioned the whole thing with the uh, the term limits is because it's had some unintended consequences here. So if that is something you guys are going to try to tackle, you might want to try to make sure you find a way to curtail what they manage to try to shove in their pockets on the way out the door. Um, actually, I just love the fact that you're talking about unintended consequences. As a, as a good conservative, I, I I spend my my life looking for those, and and that's a. Uh, that's always the best advice to give out is to look for the unintended consequences. What yeah. else might happen? Yeah, because, I mean, people don't really do that. They just dive in. They go ahead first. They're like, this is a great idea. And then 30 years later, everybody's going, this didn't work out the way we thought. All right, so we're <laughs> supposed to be taking a break right now, but this break belongs to me. So we're going to go commercial-free for the last bit of the show because I feel like we haven't really talked that much about what it is you guys are specifically trying to do. So I want to give you about the last – uh, we're down to about seven minutes, so I have to take a hard break. So in the next seven minutes, why don't you tell us as much as you can about what you guys have going on right now and ways that people can keep up with you besides the texting stuff that you just get. That that's just happened. Oh, oh, Rick, thank you. That's much, that's much appreciated. So the, uh, the, the website for the, for the Federalist Party of America is federalistpartyofamerica.org. And on that, it'll walk through the, the party's principles, which are very, very limited. We're trying to keep very focused so you don't get caught into the weeds. And, and stuck into all the arguments that you could have about a million different things. What, what we're looking to do is get, is get the conversation going again in America about federalism, the way the, the, way the country was started, the ideas behind it. We're asking people to, um, to join, to become members, to, to be social media followers, and also to become leaders in their, in their own communities. Actually, to become delegates is the, is the expression. And we have a, a kit on there for how people can start a meeting. We're very bottom up. It's not a top-down party, so... Anybody who wants to get involved can just declare himself or herself involved and become a delegate and go out there and start um, start their own meeting, their own kind of chapter as, as delegates. And um, we ask that they that they read from the Constitution, from the Federalist Papers, from the Anti-Federalist Papers, which give great perspective as well. And then, you know, have a beer during the process and have a good time with your neighbors. Um, but we want people to be joining because, um, you know, if we get numbers, it's the numbers. We need the, the numbers up. Then you start to get significant um, power. You get to be able to, to make calls. We're going to be pushing aggressively for term limits throughout the year in the, in the press and in the social media. Um, you know, the, the Republican Party ostensibly favors term limits. It's in the national platform, but I can't remember the last time they did a vote on it. I think it was when Newt Gingrich was speaker. And we want to remind the Republicans of their commitment to term limits. And hopefully President Trump, who, who, who came out uh, in favor of term limits, you know, might might be the, the kind of leader that can that can force that to happen. Um, so we're, we're going to be doing a lot of conversing on our side, but we want people to join, get involved, and start their own thing. You, you don't need permission in this party. It's a party based on simple principles. It's the principles of of you know where um, issues belong. Does everything belong in Washington? Does you know does does putting up a jungle gym belong in, at HUD in Washington? That's ridiculous. So we want to systematically dismantle the um, the machinery of Washington and start to bring it back home 
and we will be, um, once we go on ballot status, we'll be electing candidates or working to elect candidates that will um, promote that um, in, their, in their platforms. So it's a, it's a long-term play. We're not pretending that we're going to take on the world in a year because that just can't happen. Other parties have started and fizzled out because they've, they've been too ambitious too quickly. And, you know, we're talking, you know, probably ballot status next year, but it'll take, it'll take year after year. We're looking to grow gradually um, and, um, and uh, responsibly in an orderly fashion to become a real, um, a real force in America because the alternative is the two parties we have now that are spending us to death. And when interest rates go up and they're beginning to go, but if they really pop and inflation goes up, um, those payments that we're making just on the interest alone are going to take this country down. And, you know, I've got, I've got three kids, two in their twenties and, and one who's 11. And, and we are, we are maxing out our cards, their cards um, that they never even signed for. And, you know, and, and still the conversation in Washington is how much more are we spending? How much more are we spending? And so, you know, the, there is no alter, any other alternative. If you're someone out there who cares about um, sustaining the nation and about freedom in, in local communities and, um, and about um, having an economic future for their children and grandchildren, the Federalist Party of America is a pretty good option to look at. You don't have to stick around, but we ask you to join. You can stay where you are on your current party, but join us too. Take a look at what we're talking about and see how it feels. Man, I, I got to say, um, I mean, I, I've kind of been kind of on the sidelines kind of watching this thing go. And I, I have to say, you've got me pretty well hooked. I actually kind of like the idea that you guys are pushing that, hey, we don't even necessarily, we, we don't, we're not even looking for party status right now. We just want you guys to come in, you know, check out the couch, kick the tires, make yourself comfortable, see if it's something that you're going to like. I like that concept. I really do. All right. So at this point, we are coming up to the end of the show. So we are uh, quickly running out of time. Um, why don't you remind folks where it is that they can connect with you personally through social media, maybe give out the, the uh, social media oh, contacts terrific. for yeah, the sure. party and stuff? Yeah, uh, my, 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 my Twitter is probably the most active. It's, it's at WFBOR, which are my initials. So at WFBOR. And then again, the website, federal, uh, the, the Federalist Party of America.org. And then by, by text again, you can uh, text Fed the Party to 53445. And, um, and we'll, we'll keep you up to date on what's going on. But we're asking people to, to, to jump in, dive in head first. You don't have to ask permission. You want to get involved. It's there on the website what we need you to do. And it's, uh, you go start your own thing, become a delegate tomorrow. And, um, and you're off and running. The only thing that we've got is term limits for leadership or, or one year for all, all party leaders. So I'm, I'm chairman of the party pro tem, meaning in a year I go because this has to be about principles, not personalities. And we've watched how the other parties become systems. They all become about people and about power centers. And so we're trying to avoid that. So one year the leadership rotates, and the maximum donation that people can make is $100 a year to the party because we don't want to get bought. Again, wary of human nature. We're trying to keep an eye on ourselves too. All right, folks. Well, this has been my guest, Bill O'Reilly, the head of the uh, Federalist Party. Um, he's joined us for the last half of the show. If you're just now tuning in, where have you been? But that's all right. We'll, we'll have the podcast version up here in just a few minutes. Coming up next on right here on KLRMRadio.com, I do believe we have another edition of the Veto and the Veto Show, followed by Jess's POV. And then, of course, we'll top off the night uh, both with Behind Enemy Lions. And then I'll be back with you for the Robinson and Wright Show tonight, Friday night, where we have special guest Opulent Amish from the uh, – uh, uh, I forgot the name of her show. Fubar, you know, Politabunny, the co-host. He's coming on with us tonight. Sorry, I got tongue-tied for a second. Get paid to talk for a living. Can't seem to pull it off. You guys have a great rest of your night. Enjoy your weekend. We'll be right. I'll be back with you here in a couple hours. So. What makes new Simply Summer's Eve feminine wash different? It's simple. Seriously, that's the answer. It's made with simple ingredients. Ingredients that help stop odor and help you maintain a naturally healthy pH gently and effectively. Here's what Simply Summer's Eve ingredients do not include. Harsh chemicals, dyes, alcohol, or parabens. And it comes in light, refreshing scents like mandarin blossom and coconut water. New Simply Summer's Eve gentle foaming wash and cleansing cloths. Gentle by nature. Click the tile to learn more.